I have dismantled several Anchor Nano 2 chargers so far. Today I will dismantle the 65 watt version. I'll skip the introduction and start the disassembly. I previously dismantled the 45 watt version. The 45 watt version was a bit hard to dismantle. The lid didn't come off as easily as I thought. In the end, I almost had to destroy the charger to dismantle it. The 45 watt version uses four circuit boards, placing them three dimensionally. Components are fully packed into the case. The 65 watt version is also hard to dismantle. I have to almost destroy it to dismantle. I open the plug part. Can you see? This part is filled with pink silicone. The silicon and the circuit board are integrated, sticking to the case. It's hard to separate them. I'm using a slotted screwdriver to separate the silicone from the case. Wow. The circuit boards inside the case are all integrated into a single lump using silicone. This is probably for heat dissipation. I believe the circuit boards that generate heat are stuck to the inside of the case so that the heat is dissipated from the surface of the case efficiently. As I mentioned in the previous video, chargers of this series generate a lot of heat. They can get up to about 76 degrees, and yet there's no room to dissipate heat. That's why it's filled with silicon to increase thermal conductivity even a little. The body is so small they couldn't leave the space for heat dissipation. This is natural air cooling and relies only on the surface area of the case to dissipate heat. That's why they had to do this to increase dissipation efficiency even a little. I'm pretty sure about that. I'll clean this up. There's silicone everywhere and I don't know where anything is, so I'll remove all the silicone. The silicone is different from regular ones. It's elastic. It's like a kneaded eraser. Regular white silicone falls apart pretty easily, but this one is so elastic you can knead separate pieces into a putty. It's a bit strange. Since the silicone makes my fingers sticky, I'll put on gloves to dismantle the charger. If you rub the silicone with your finger, you can get a lot of it off. When you can't remove any more silicone with your finger, now you'll need to use tweezers to remove little by little. So tiring. I tried other methods and thought of using this hard brush. You can easily remove the silicone by rubbing it with a hard brush. Look at it, it's all clean now. Look on this side. Silicone is stuffed deep inside. I'll have to tear down this component to remove the silicone. The circuit boards are connected three-dimensionally. This circuit board is like a terminal to be inserted. It's inserted into the hole of another circuit board, and the connected part is soldered. The other side of the board has the same structure. The connected part is soldered. I'll stop removing the silicone and start dismantling the circuit board. It seems very difficult to remove the solder here using a soldering iron, so I'll use a heat gun to warm it up and remove it. While I was using a heat gun, I realized it's a lot more efficient to use a solder wick rather than a heat gun. I applied the solder wick here and melted and removed the solder so that the circuit board comes off. It's done. I noticed something when I was removing the solder. When I applied the soldering iron here, the whole thing became very hot. Even the circuit board on the opposite side was hot. It means that the heat was transferred through the components and silicone inside and the circuit board and reached the opposite side. It came off. Look, as expected, silicone is stuffed in every corner. Pink silicone. It's hard to inspect the board, so I'll remove the silicone. I'll use the brush I used earlier and scrub the silicone off. It must be pretty difficult to fill in the silicone, leaving no space. I wonder how they do it. I want to know... The circuit boards are now pretty clean. I brushed them with a toothbrush extremely elaborately. These are electrolytic capacitors. Two long ones and two short ones were used for this charger. They were all soldered on the circuit boards. All of them have the temperature limitation of 105 degrees. On this board, this attached component is called a transformer. A copper foil is wrapped around it. It's to prevent electromagnetic leakage from the transformer. The transformer has a rectangular shape. Magnetic wires are sticking out. There's a core for the wires. The core works as an inductor. A lot of pink silicone was stuffed inside. It's really a lot. The silicone was stuffed leaving no space. I'll measure the weight of the silicone. Let's do it. It's a lot. Look, it weighs 34 grams. The description of Anchor Nano 265 watts is the weight is 112 grams. The weight of the silicone is 34.4 grams. The weight of the silicone accounts for 30% of total weight of the charger. A lot of silicone is used. Now I understand why the 65 watt version is a bit heavy. With 30 grams of silicone inside, of course it's heavy. 
probably the silicone is used to improve heat dissipation. As you can see, the case is very small, as it's packed with a lot of components that generate heat. Heat dissipation of this charger must be a challenge. The silicone is filled in the case to increase dissipation efficiency even a little. Yeah, this must be for heat dissipation. It feels cool when I touch it. I've seen something like this in an AC adapter when I was dismantling it. The 45 watt version of Nano 2 that I dismantled before wasn't filled with silicone. That means the 45 watt version has a bit more room for heat dissipation compared to the 65 watt version. On the contrary, the 65 watt version doesn't have room for heat dissipation. That's why it's filled with silicone. I have dismantled various USB chargers, but I'd never seen one filled with this much silicone for heat dissipation. This one is the first. Let's look at the circuits. There are three circuit boards. These two are not main boards. This is the main board. On the back side of the board, this component is a gallium nitride transistor, and this is an active clamp IC. Both components are sold by Power Integrations, an American company. This converter lowers the DC voltage from nearly 140 volts to 5 volts. In that process, electromagnetic interference occurs if the converter is a normal flyback converter without an active clamp circuit. However, an active clamp flyback converter causes less electromagnetic interference compared to a normal flyback converter. To get into technical details, it's because an active clamp circuit changes the switching method of this gallium nitride transistor to soft switching. Soft switching causes less electromagnetic interference. It also improves the power efficiency a little. Active clamp flyback converter has such characteristics. The patent for active clamp flyback converter was issued in the US 1986. This circuit was invented 37 years ago. Study of this circuit started at that time. After 37 years, active clamp flyback converter is finally used in daily products like this USB charger. It took 37 years for this technology to become something that people use in daily life. The date of production is written on this board, November 28, 2020. Not sure whether the board was designed or manufactured on that date. Either way, the circuit diagram already existed on November 28, 2020. In Japan, Anchor Nano 265 Watt was released in late July 2021. That means the Anchor Nano 2 project already existed at least three years ago. By the way, both of the two ICs attached on this circuit board are sold by Power Integrations. This is in a Switch 4 family, which contains a gallium nitride transistor. This is Clamp Zero, which is an active clamp circuit. The release date of these ICs is in late May 2021. However, the circuit board was already designed on the 28th of November 2020. What I'm saying is that Anchor started designing and manufacturing the charger even before Power Integrations released the ICs officially. I did some research on news releases and found that Anchor signed an exclusive partnership agreement with Power Integrations on this gallium nitride transistor. That means other companies couldn't use this transistor right after the release. You could say Anchor made sure they were able to release a new product that uses a new technology other companies couldn't use. Today I dismantled Anchor Nano 265 watt version. I found unexpected things inside. I was surprised to see this pink silicone for dissipation stuffed inside. Also, the active clamp flyback circuit was used. It has rarely been used for USB chargers before. I get the feeling that Anchor is a company that's always taking on new challenges. In the description, I attached a link to the charger. Please buy the product from the link if you're interested. To add one thing, the package says it's powered by GAN2 technology. It says GAN2 is Anchor's unique technology. To be honest, I couldn't tell which part uses a unique technology. As a specialist, I have to point that out. Nevertheless, this product definitely had good quality. 